I'm at Caledonian Horticulture's Brayhead Quarry site today and I'm interested in learning exactly what happens when the green material comes through those gates. Now I understand that we have our material that's coming from council but also mm -hmm. the material that's coming more locally as well from landscapers so can you talk me through that process? Yeah sure so for the councils the lorries will go over the Weybridge okay. here and um, they'll get weighed get a ticket and then they go up to the back of the yard the landscapers they come into this section here so you can see it's divided up into different bays so we've got one for green waste we've got one for soil and turf we've got a waste wood one uh, rubble and then a wood chip bay on the end so all these materials we either process into new products and sell on or we get them recycled okay and the wood chip you have in this far corner is that wood chip you've created yourself or does that come in that way? No, so that's from mainly tree surgeons that they've got their own chipping machines. So that comes into site already. Chip. So it's fully accessible to uh, many different industries within horticulture. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. brilliant. Okay. Um, so then once we've come on and we've weighed everything and they've gotten their ticket, then we're heading up here. Local landscapers have dropped everything off there. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what happens when we come up here? So sure, let's go have a look. <laughs> So once the council lorries have been over the Weybridge, they come up here and they empty out and you can see there's a really good mix of the green leafy material, but also the brown woody material. Yeah, and this is all fresh growth, this is all coming. Yeah, this is all freshly come in today. Um, and it's really important to have that mix of green and brown material to get the best possible compost. So on, once it's on our site in here, we spread it out in a thin layer and we pick it by hand to take out any contaminants that shouldn't be there. And that'll just be spread out here, just right in front? Yeah, just on this area, just in front, we've got a machine that will pull it down into a thin layer and then once it's been picked, it's pushed back, pushed up. back up. So we have all our fresh garden waste here and as I turn around, I can really clearly see the different stages of the process. But what I'm first interested in, how does it go from this mass to this and then this. Can you talk me through all that? Yeah, sure. So we have a big machine called a shredder okay. um, and it's a huge kind of rectangular box with the arm coming out of it. And this material we put in the top, there's all the blades that get shredded, <laughs> as the name suggests. Yeah. And then it gets put into the windrows here. So this is the start of the process at this end. Okay. And as you look along and see it getting a bit darker and yeah. slightly smaller particle size, you can really see like the composting process in action. So these big piles are called windrows um, and we turn them every couple of weeks down the pad. And that's so that the middle of the windrow um, heats up to about 70 degrees. Okay. So that's going to kill off any weed seeds, pathogen, that type mm. of thing, and really help the composting process. Yeah. So we turn it so the outside of the material, uh, the outside of the windrow, and then ends up in the middle. So it all has that chance to get up yeah. to the heat. So an extreme scale of composting. Mm -hmm. Now, as any person composting at home, they'll wonder, how do you check the temperature inside? Sure, so we have a huge probe, it's probably about six foot, um, and okay. that goes right down into the piles and yeah, can give us an accurate temperature reading. So we know like how often to turn kind of based on that. Okay, yeah, because I was going to ask, like, how often do you know, uh, well, how often do you test the temperature? Has it got intervals or is it kind of done by site management? Do they take that judgment? Uh, yeah, site management, because it depends, so obviously, if different weather conditions yeah. at different time of year, um, also depending on time of year, will affect what materials coming Absolutely, in. Okay. So over the spring, summer, a lot more green material. And then when things died back and people are pruning bushes and shrubs that type of thing it's a lot more woody material coming in so the composting process takes a different amount of time so yeah the site managers yeah. know all that and take that into it's account been really flexible I think. yeah okay uh, and as we were looking around as you mentioned before that it starts to get darker as it kind of goes on as it's broken down even further as it's been turned and then the temperature kept mm -hmm. and then as we move further further down and we have the smaller particles mm -hmm. what's happening over here Sure, so when it gets down to the end of the concrete pads, we uh, we screen it before it becomes our final product. Okay. So you can probably still see in the last piles there's some woody material. Um, that won't compost down in the, the time that our composting process takes. So it's screened out um, and then it goes for biomass. And we've got different size screens, so we can screen for like the finer grade, like our Kelpie product, okay. um, and also the top dressing we do for lawns. Um, and then we've got the turf mix and green goodness is the same size. Wow. And then we also do like an agriculture spec compost, which is again, slightly bigger size. Wow, okay. 
Beautiful. So we get lots of um, brown bins coming in with the garden clippings and cuttings from our everyday homes and villages and towns and cities. Can you tell me, I've got a bag here full of different waste materials. How has that happened? So unfortunately, people do put things in their brown bin that they shouldn't. So it should only be garden clippings. Mm -hmm. But quite often we get things like plant tags. Okay. Um, they're made of plastic. It shouldn't be going in the brown bins. Uh, we get plant pots and plant trays. Um, you can see in this one that the soil's still in it. I don't think there's dead plants as well. So that needs to be emptied out into the bin um, and then the plastic disposed of separately. Okay. Um, get bags like this, actually one of our own ones, but empty compost bags. Mm -hmm. Again, people just pop them in. Um, and another thing we sometimes get quite a lot of is compostable bags, that type of thing. And um, we unfortunately can't take them. Yeah. It's not in the open window, so that counts as a waste material. Okay. So we're really trying to encourage people to check what they're putting in their bins, because at the end of the day, the better quality material going in, the better quality compost we'll get exactly. out. Exactly. So just really having a good look before you just try and save time and shift things in. No, just take your time, have a good look, make sure anything that cannot be composted is out of that brown bin. Yes, exactly. So once the compost has been screened and it's mm -hmm. ready to be bagged up, we move it in under cover here, just to keep out the elements a little. And you can see it's a nice fine compost. It's nice and dark, nutrient rich. Uh -huh. Yeah, and just looking at it here, and you can see how light and fluffy that is. And this is the green goodness. Yes. Uh, okay. And so people can will be using this in their garden. They can use it as top dressing. They can use it in, on amongst their compost for backfilling trees, for shrubs, for containers. Will this stay here all year round? I imagine come spring and summer that it has a very quick turnaround with lots of it going out and then back in again. Yeah, definitely. So in the, especially in the spring, um, as people are starting to plant up their gardens, it's not in here very long. It's a very quick turnaround. Um, and then it slows down later in the year, but then it'll pick up again in the autumn and when people are starting to mulch their gardens again. Yeah, I'm just going to take one more feel of this. It's absolutely, it's so fine. It's such a good material. So we've seen the process straight from when it comes through the gate as garden clippings and cuttings straight into the pile of where it goes there. We've had our landscapers and we've got our council waste. It goes through all its different processes where it reduces down in colour till we end up with our final product. But it's in here where we get it bagged up. Here we have the green goodness and then sealed along the top, piled in, ready to go out to all the customers.